Former Ranger Brendan Smith between periods two and three on ESPN just talk about work ethic and grinding and the exact way that the Hurricanes became so successful. That's what we saw with the overtime goal. Nobody, no matter who you root for, wants to see a goal yeah. carry him off a player on his own team. Yeah. But that's what happened. Ian Cole, who only had two goals all year, only had one other goal in his Stanley Cup career of more than 100 games, ends up getting the winner at 312. And look, this is a lot of what Carolina wants to accomplish. Uh, coaches would refer to this as aiming for piles. And when there are piles of either the other team's players or a combination of both, they want to just aim it there. They want to get it there so they can look for ricochets, broken plays. In this case, it's three Rangers, but they're just throwing it at the net. And I thought it was going to look like this from the start of the game. It, it didn't really happen. They did this eight times in the first, where they typically do it a lot more often. And there you go. You can see it coming in off Lindgren's hand. But yeah, not the way you want it to go. And it just felt like it was going to go that way, the way that it ended in the third period. And you know, uh, unfortunately for the Rangers, they're going to have to recover from this. And again, this goal by Ian Cole just shows you the confidence level that the Carolina Hurricanes had going into the third period in overtime. He shouldn't be around the net in the slot. Like, yeah. he's a stay-at-home uh, stay defenseman at the blue line, mm -hmm. and he's getting involved in the offense. He's getting to the slot, getting that shot on goal. Yeah. Carolina was playing with a lot of confidence in the third and overtime, and the New York Rangers were really backing off. This shows exactly where two teams were. It bears the question, then. Was it the Rangers sitting back with a one-goal lead, or was it what Brendan Smith talked about and the best team in the Metro Division, second best in the East, actually asserting itself. They woke the up. Yeah. Carolina's game is shoot and retrieve. Shoot and retrieve. Uh, volume shooting, but seams tend to open up as the sequence develops. And look, that's their game. They're going to keep doing that. They're not going to play off the rush. This is how they play. And look, the Rangers missed coverage on the first goal. And that's really what you know, breaks the back because the team did have this game in charge and in hand up until the third period. Where I would say the Carolina Hurricanes woke up is they got a few breakaways, they started using their speed, mm -hmm. they played a heavier game in the third period. Where the Rangers gave it away is puck management. You know, trying to make these flips in the neutral zone, you know, hope plays. I, I felt right before the 1-1 one -one goal, like there's a chance for Truba to say, hey, I'm going to hang on to it, I'm going to go bind to my partner, we're going to take a deep breath, I'm not just going to give it back yeah. to the there was a lot of Hurricanes. punting. There was a lot of, exactly, yeah. good football term there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Carolina had only 37 shot attempts through two periods. They had 22 shot attempts in the third period. It still took them almost 18 minutes to score, Steve, but the third period was dominated by Carolina. It was, and look, I think the Rangers felt it. Uh, they're going to have to know how to absorb that, but not, not punt the play and not live to fight another day, but live to bring the game to them. And look, this is just exactly the way the game is going to be for the rest of this series. Now that Carolina knows they can play this way, uh, there was a couple of missed coverage plays. But on the bright side, Shesterkin didn't have to make a hard save in the first two periods, fellas. All of his work was in the third period. Uh, Nina Ryder here hits the post. Uh, breakaways on Shesterkin right now. Guys are shooting on him. They're not deking. They know they can't get around his legs, so they're shooting. This one here, though, fellas, for me, I, you know, Marty and I talked about this. I would have really liked to see somebody be able to recover for a missed assignment and when somebody makes a mistake and there was mistakes made off the rush on assignment coverage, uh, I just like to see somebody double back and just feel, felt like they didn't fill their lanes on the back check. Halfway in the third period, the ESPN put a uh, graphic that said Carolina had six scoring chances to their count in the first 40 minutes. Yeah. They already had five in 10 minutes in the third period. That is just to show you the difference in the quality chances that Carolina was able to generate in the third period and where the Rangers just, you know, they didn't continue to put pressure. They didn't continue to have chances. They backed off and it, it, it made a huge difference. And, you know, it's going to set the tone for the next possible six games. Mm -hmm. That third period in overtime is going to set the tone. Rangers are going to have to work extra hard to reverse that, especially in game two. Yeah, so Sebastian Ajo, who had two goals in the first round series against Boston, opens his account in this series late in the, in the third period to tie it up. Sometimes the anatomy of a goal is almost as interesting as the puck actually crossing the line. When you break down this goal by Sebastian Ajo, what stands out? 
Well, a couple of things. One, we're going to talk about our Timmy Panarin and the back check, and he kind of just puck watch and let two Carolina Hurricanes players go by him and the change by Strom, right? Strom is going to change right here. So now you've got a 1-2-2, two, two, but you're missing the second part of the two. You see how Zibanejad's at the bench. Teravainen is going to get the, the puck. You've got 1-D coming in. you got Truba that's coming over. Where's supposed to be Zibanejad would be on Jarvis now, and Truba could stay over on Aho. He wasn't there because because he was late coming on the ice on the Strom change. But again, you have to recognize if you're on the ice and if you're Panarin on that play, that the one, two, two, there's supposed to be a second man there. He's not there because he's coming off the bench. So you have to adjust. Maybe you just take a guy back to the net. Maybe you take a couple extra strides and you say, I'm gonna make something happen and buy some time. Yeah. That did not happen. You talked about the youth of the Rangers. Those are experienced guys. Moment. Uh, I think the coaches are going to look at that, and another coach's term that I oftentimes heard was, I don't want you guys to look like your sticks are ever off the ice, you're not holding a flag. To me, I saw everybody, everyone was holding a flag there, fellas. That, that's just the way it looks. And, you know, again, I think that's just a teachable moment where right away we're going to talk about this. When there's a breakdown like this, what's your assignment? Who's the first guy back? How do we pick up the proper man? Because it was a paralyzing moment. It was uh, a spectator's moment where everybody was just waiting to see what was going to happen next. And everybody's sticks was up in the air. Yeah, and you saw the puck hop over a ranger stick in the offensive, in the neutral zone, and then Brady Shea quickly moving it back. That created the three on two and the tying goal. This was a night where the Rangers scored only one goal. And it was scored by a line that was by far yeah. the best line on the ice for the Rangers, and that is the kid line. Yeah, and unfortunately, they were the one that were on the ice for the overtime goal, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take away the game that they played right from the get-go, the way they moved the puck. Uh, their speed yeah. was really good. They attacked the net. Physicality by Lafreniere, obviously, throwing a few big hits early on, uh, asserting himself. This was Hiddle uh, with the chance. Ranto with the big save, obviously. Philip Hiddle had this, the goal, but look at this. Capocacco trying to get to the puck. At least he's moving his feet. He's trying to get a confrontation. And, you know, I, I thought that that kid line was excellent throughout the whole game. Yep. They were the reason why the Rangers were up with nothing. Uh, but it wasn't just by scoring goal. It was also on physicality, on puck possession. And, and this Capocacco has a chance. Toe picks a little bit. The Rangers wanted and to Here's the real it. chance. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. 45 remaining at one nothing. That was a heart attack right there. They had their opportunity right there, fellas. And uh, you look, you go back to that first period. You got to like a lot of what they did. Uh, they had a great first period, the young guys. I thought that the Zabana Jazz line had a good night. Had a good night. Uh, Strom's line, not as obvious. Yep. And I think that it's a good news, bad news a little bit with the young guys. You want them to play great, but I don't know if you want no line number three to be your best right. line every night and the most noticeable line every night. So everybody's got to pick up. But I did think that on the goal, uh, start to, the, to start this game, this was a line that looked like they were working in continuity. They were working together, and they made plays that were very noticeable. They were really coming off the uh, screen. So, you know, uh, you take a look at that first goal. I mean, it yep. shows a lot here. It starts with Shesterkin in the own zone, but they, it, the Rangers were commanding in their own zone too on the walls in the first period. Lafreniere sees that he's got an opportunity here to pick off a play from D'Angelo, and now he looks right away back ice to see who's coming. Now everybody filled lanes. Kako's filling a lane. He's hard to defend, so everybody opens up and Slavin doesn't play this poorly. The pass is made before his stick. He turns the wrong way and he does the beneficiary. But uh, if you want to look at how to play a, you know, an on the rush play that's moved quickly through the neutral zone after a giveaway, that's a three on two with great execution.